Hey, you're watching a wine show on YouTube. I love that. But isn't wine expensive? Couldn't you be drinking something like beer or whiskey? I hear they're cheaper to drink. Well, we're going to be talking about just that thing, the economics of drinking wine. All that and so much more on this episode of The Average Wine Enthusiast. Hi there, everybody. My name is Mike LaPlante, and I'm the average wine enthusiast. I thought on this episode, I would talk about the economics of drinking wine. I feel as though the cost of wine is really something that is a barrier for a lot of folks enjoying wine. And that's really too bad because uh, as in my experience, I find that uh, drinking wine uh, makes me feel much different than as if I were to drink a bottle of beer or even um, a cocktail with whiskey in it or bourbon, which I just went to Kentucky and had some really good bourbon. But good bourbon, whoo, it can really uh, pack a punch as it were. Or if you're drinking vodka or something with it, that. Enjoying a glass of wine is unlike any other uh, consumption of alcohol, in my opinion, and I think you'd find a lot of folks would agree with me in that regard. Also, the amount of people who are involved in the wine industry, uh, I, I think, is far greater than uh, folks who are in the spirit industry or even the beer industry. Um, sommeliers, need I say more? Is there beer experts out there? Sure, but is there an industry built around that uh, profession? I don't think so. So I think that the cost of wine really is something that uh, a lot of people consider when they decide what to drink, whether it's spirits or beer or wine. And also if, when they go to actually say, yes, I'm saying yes to wine tonight, uh, they go to the liquor store and end up buying a box of wine, which to me, you know, that's a choice that you make and you're making it solely on, I shouldn't say solely, but it's one of the higher priorities of your buying decision is the cost. You know, you're going to buy either buy a box of Cabernet Sauvignon, or you're going to buy a box of Merlot. You're going to actually, you know, so there's another factor in there is what, what do you like more? Do you like Merlot better? Or do you like Cabernet Sauvignon better? Or you get the point. Uh, so I was just going to go over some prices here. So for a bottle of beer, in the beer store, which we have another monopoly as far as that goes, which is somewhat dissipating, but not really. Uh, you go to the beer store and you, that's the place you buy your beer. There's some grocery stores now where you can buy beer as well. And there's usually a good selection of craft beers in there, which is a whole different thing altogether, which may, is making that type of beer more expensive to drink. Um, and that's a whole subject on its own. Uh, but the grocery stores tend to carry a, a fair amount of these craft beers. But as far as the mainstream beers, the ones that are selling the most, your Labatt's Blues and your Coors Lights, um, those are being sold um, mostly out of the beer store. And uh, so I went to the beer store website and I found that the average price of a bottle of beer is between $1.75 and two twenty-five. And a bottle of beer is a serving of beer, and that's, uh, what is it, it's 12 ounces. So by the time I'm done my serving of wine, uh, you should be done your serving of beer. And it has roughly the same um, alcoholic um, effect on you. And that's a rough guideline, but as far as, you know, how much you can drink uh, in your, and how much blood or alcohol you can have in your bloodstream, uh, if you're getting behind the wheel, which I highly don't recommend at all. If you're drinking, don't be driving. Um, so beer and a glass of wine are roughly the same. Same with a cocktail. If you're using one shot of whiskey or vodka or rum or whatever in your cocktail, it's the same as having a glass of beer or a bottle of beer or a glass of wine. Uh, speaking of cocktails, um, one uh, whiskey that is relatively popular, especially in these parts, is Weiser's. And I know it's popular actually all over the world. <laughs> you can get a 
Wisers and Coke are wisers on the rocks in many locations all over the world. And where do they bottle that at? They bottle that just down the road from me. Yay, Windsor again. Minivans and whiskey. What a great place. Um, so Wisers uh, for a 750 milliliter bottle of that is $25. And in a bottle of uh, whiskey, uh, 750 milliliters works out to roughly 25 ounces. Uh, and the average serving, like I said, is an ounce. Um, so that is relatively inexpensive. That's a dollar per serving. And it's the least amount of alcohol, I mean, least amount of liquid to be drinking. Uh, so, and, but, you know, somebody who has a, a cocktail, well, it, it'll take them just as long to drink their cocktail as it will for me to drink my wine and for that guy to drink his bottle of beer. So whiskey and uh, vodka and rum, they seem to be a relatively cost-effective uh, way of consuming alcohol. Whereas a bottle of wine... Uh, if you're taking my, any of my advice, uh, you're spending somewhere between fifteen and twenty dollars for a bottle of wine. If you're spending less than that, you're getting—it's getting risky. You're going to end up risking buying a bottle of crap. Um, so if you're spending that much money, um, well, let's do the math. There, uh, in a bottle of wine, you have again seven hundred fifty milliliters, and that's twenty-five ounces. And if we were to split that up in five uh, servings. That would be five ounce servings, and that's you know that's that's an average amount uh, for a serving. Having said that, if you go to a restaurant, uh, I find that the choices are six ounces and nine ounces. I think uh, who wants nine ounces of wine in their glass? I don't know, but uh, I think it's six because six times four is twenty four, and that gives you an ounce for you know for spillage and stuff like that. So, um, but having said that, you go to a restaurant and you get a six ounce glass of wine, you're paying, uh, well, I think I just paid $11 for a six ounce glass of uh, Malbec 2017 or something like that. Decent uh, wine will be much better in a couple of years. But that's, a, that's another show on its own, going to a restaurant and getting a decent um, glass of wine or getting a bottle is easier than getting a glass, that's for sure. But anyway, that's another story that I may touch on in a future show. So, um, if you're spending, let's say, $20 on a bottle of wine, which I recommend, um, you're paying $4 per serving if you're giving yourself a five ounce uh, serving, which, you know, you can drink five ounces of wine the same amount of time that uh, your friend is drinking his 12 ounces of beer and your other friend is drinking his one ounce of whiskey with some, maybe some ice and a splash of Coke or something. Um, so, Obviously, drinking wine is more expensive. You can cut that cost down by one quarter. Let's say I just said it was four dollars for a, a glass. If you take, it would be three dollars if you were to buy a fifteen dollar bottle of wine. So three, even three dollars, is more than a premium beer if you were to buy it at the beer store. So. What's my point here is that wine is really is the most expensive alcoholic beverage to drink on a regular basis. And why is that? I suspect because there is so much infrastructure in the wine industry uh, to get that bottle of wine to your wine store. You know, you have, I know in France, there's a very specific uh, setup there where the wineries go to. Uh, people known as negotiants. So they're, they're kind of like people who buy the wine off the wineries and then they uh, distribute it to other folks, whether it's LCBOs or wherever. Uh, some wineries, depending on what their volume is, uh, deal directly with uh, retail or international shippers. And, you know, so there, there is a, a fair amount of middlemen involved for that bottle of wine to get to your wine store. Is that why it's uh, cheaper for um, Malbec from Argentina or a Carmenere from Chile to get to Canada? Because you can get some decent wine there for around $15, maybe even a buck or two less if it's on sale. And um, I suspect it's because of the lack of middlemen in those countries that the wineries are producing 
so much wine they can get it here um, for far less per ounce uh, but if you're buying uh, wine from Italy or wine from France even wine from Germany uh, you're gonna pay some uh, larger dollars per bottle for sure but you can still get some decent um, deals on some really good wine so I, I guess that's going to be it for my talk on economics of drinking wine. Yes, it is the most expensive alcoholic beverage to drink. But why do we drink wine? Sometimes it's the way it makes us feel. Uh, and the experience of drinking a glass of wine, especially, uh, you know, a big jammy glass of Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley or something. Every sip is, uh, is uh, an experience unto itself. And you get one of those you know every time you bring that glass to your mouth do you get that with a, a whiskey possibly if you're drinking it straight up and or you're drinking some brandy out of a snifter or something like that but uh, i find that wine is really the way it makes you feel is unlike uh, the way a, a, a fine whiskey will make you feel definitely different than a, a, a bottle of beer will make you feel so it's the you know there's some level of intoxication if you're drinking wine uh, or any kind of alcohol you're going to get some level of intoxication and i believe that wine is the most pleasant uh, of all types of alcohol to enjoy okay before i finish this episode and uh, maybe see you again next year uh, i wanted to show you something that i received uh, it's a, it was a great present i have to admit and it is this um, decanter holder dryer thingamajiggy it's uh it's basically just a stick with a decently wide base on it this is made of stainless steel but you can get these that are just made out of wire as well and uh what i was finding is that um you wash your decanter i also have another tool that it's on a wire and it's got sponge on it you can wash the bottom and the sides of your decanter with it but then how do you dry your how do you drip dry your decanter well i would be either put it in a big bowl or something with a towel underneath it and place that on top of that um, but even then i found that um, the edge of the decanters over time would hit something and um, it, they would chip i have one right here that is actually pretty chipped indeed i'll get a little close-up of that after but uh, yeah you get your uh, you get your wet decanter and uh, you put it on a stick one of the, with a little rubber tip on it and you drop it on there and uh, it stays there it's it's totally solid I have another crazy decanter even this one has no problem staying on there so um, if you're looking for a gift for a wine enthusiast such as ourselves, uh, I would highly recommend getting them one of these. And uh, I just leave them over here with the rest of my decanters. It's upside down, and if I need it, I grab it and uh, I start decanting. I think I picked that up on Amazon for about 20 bucks. So anyway, there's a, a little gift idea if you're looking for gifts. It's I know it's past Christmas. I still got my Christmas tree up, though. Uh, it's a couple days after Christmas as I record this but uh, i won't be seeing you again till next year thanks a lot everybody for watching this past year probably do this for at least another year so we have that to look forward to if you uh, have any friends who are into wine they may be in you know just getting into wine or whatever turn them on to my youtube channel i would really appreciate you know something else i really appreciate is the big organ trio letting me use their music in this show and i also appreciate you watching this show Thank you very much. Until next time, I'm Mike LaPlante, and I'm the Average Wine Enthusiast. Salute!